Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at my gear that I use to carry my cardboard around and also uh, what events I would suggest for beginners. Let's go to the video. I personally started playing fab attending armories. Let me tell you that it's a mountain of stuff to learn when you first get into the game. All the different decks that there are with all their nuances, strategies, play styles. It was quite overwhelming for me as a seasoned <laughs> MTG player to get into Flesh and Blood. But it felt refreshing in a very good way um, to have something new to test around, play around. Just having the opportunity to deep dive into a new game. It was amazing. If I could give myself an advice when I started playing with the things I know now, I would suggest that um, attending limited events is a very good starting point since you do not have to own all the decks. Um, you can just test out the cards, get in touch with the latest cards. Everyone is like on the same level of experience with the new set most of the time. With limited events there is not that big of a difference between the knowledge uh, and experience of players as with CC. Because with CC you are seeing a lot of players that are grinding the game for three to four years maybe even. And they really really know their stuff and the cards and the nuances of their deck. So it can be a little overwhelming for new players. Just ask your local game store when your next limited armor is and have fun. Also an advice I would give myself would be that you do not need to worry about not owning cards from uh, WTR or Arcane Rising since with all the history pack product that is coming out right now you still have the opportunity to pick those up. Maybe not the originals but I mean you don't need <laughs> to bling out your deck right out on day one. So I would recommend that, that you get your hands on some HP1 or HP2 cards and so you can build your collection from there. Another format besides limited um, would be Blitz. Since Blitz rounds are only about 30 minutes, you can play a lot more decks within a certain amount of time than with CC. Also with Blitz you do not have uh, as much depth with the game as with CC decks. So I would recommend just picking up some decks, maybe proxy some, test the playstyle. So if you enjoy the deck, you can build a CC deck with it or just stick with Blitz, whatever you want. I'm currently testing uh, for Road to Nets um, and I started with uh, Oldim. As I know now, Oldim is not the most beginner-friendly deck. <laughs> it's, um, it's quite nuanced, quite hard to play. It's a control style. You need to know what your opponent does. With all decks you should know that, but with Ultim especially because of the interactions, you'll need to know when to punish them, when to disrupt them, when to use your D-reacts and your uh, crush effects. For a beginner I would recommend a hero like Phi that has a very simple, very linear game plan. As with um, decks like Icelander, old him. I would recommend that you pick those up after you've played your first 10 games so you get to know how a game plays out. As with armories, I attend armories almost bi-weekly at this point. I am very fortunate to live in a place where there is like a triangle of um, local game stores that offer them. So I get to play at least once a week. Also this shows this density of uh, armories that the community is growing quite quickly. When I remember with my first MTG events it took a very very long time until several other spots than my original LGS were running MTG events. So it's really nice to see with Flesh and Blood that it's not the same way, not the same slow growth rate as with MTG. So yeah really speaks for the game. Now let's go to the gear that I use to carry my cardboard around. For my decks I mostly use Game Genic products. I have some Ultimate Guard ones but since Game Genic has such an intelligent design you really feel the quality of the product. 
I, I tend to favor Game Genic over Ultimate Guard. For my main deck, I use the Stronghold 200 plus XL deck box from Game Genic. It's a really handy deck box since it can store two decks and also has a compartment for your dice and tokens. So you always have like two decks around. Since I frequently use also the um, mini snaps from Ultra Pro, which I show you right now. These mini snaps uh, take a lot of space in your deck box. So if your equipment suite is around seven to eight equipment pieces, uh, you really, really need a large deck box or even like a stronghold deck box that has two compartments to fit all your mini snaps in it. So I use this Sidewinder. 133 plus uh, Xeno skin deck box from Ultimate Guard. It fits my mini snaps quite nicely. Here's my Drome deck. I even have some um, Ashwing tokens in here and also the equipment. Yeah. The thing about this deck box is you can't take away the lid. So if you have your deck box on the table, you either need to close your lid or have it like open on the side of the thing that I carry around also is uh, a Game Genic double deck box. It contains some sleeves, some dice, some perfect size for my limited events. I have all the hero cards from the latest set and hero weapons in here. So the tokens, um, so it, I'm not f I have all the hero cards and weapons in here, so I'm not dependent on the tokens that people open. As for my trades, I would recommend a Game Genic binder. At the moment, I use the binder I started the game with. It's a Ultimate Guard um, snap binder with the strap on it. I'm not a big fan of this kind of binder because a thing that happens is cards get compressed a bit like that, even more when the binder gets fuller. So if you're looking for a binder, I would recommend a binder like this one. This is an actual Game Genic binder. It has the zip mechanic, so the cards don't fall out. Your cards don't get squished on the top. And with this binder, it's really nice that cards fit in double sleeved. You can fit all your double sleeved equipment in here. For all the other cards that I own that are playables but not currently in any deck, I use a box from Dragon Shield. It's quite a massive box and even heavier when it's full. Quickly show you what it looks like. It's a box with two rows that I put all my playables in, like Wounded Bull, Sink Belows, Oasis Respites, all the things that you need in your decks, but you don't really want to put in, in the big binder, but also you don't want to have it lay around. So I use this box to store the mid-tier staples as I build a deck or just want to upgrade decks or change for a certain meta. I can swap cards in and out from here and yeah. Just a really safe and secure place, safe way to store your cards. Sleeve-wise, I use the Dragon Shield Black Matte Sleeves. I also use them in my MTG career. I really love the sleeve. It's really easy to double sleeve. It really has a nice feel to it. For perfect size, I always double sleeve my cards, some cards in the deck, and of course the equipment can get pretty expensive. I use the Dragon Shield Perfect Size. It obviously fits perfectly into the Dragon Shield Black Matte product, but you can use every other sleeve. I wouldn't recommend uh, side loaders since side loaders actively damage your cards. I know there is the argument about it's easier to sleeve cards, but the thing with sided loading sleeve is, in my opinion at least, that cards get actively damaged because the purpose of the double sleeving is that the opening of the sleeve within the larger sleeve is on the bottom so they, there is no way any dirt or any dust can enter can get on your cards so I really would only recommend the regular perfect size where you sleeve your cards for an example you sleeve the cards you slide it from the bottom up so it's closed on top and then you put your card into the sleeve like this. So the card is protected from above, there's no way 
any dust or dirt can enter here. With side loading sleeves, the opening would be here, so it's much easier for dirt and dust to get in on your cards. And with this, we are at the end of the video. The next video I will put up is a review of some product, if it's worth to buy it as a beginner. I hope you learned something today. If you have any suggestions, uh, critique for the video, uh, just let me know down in the comments. Like and subscribe. Like like and like you can like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want i really hope you learned something and see you in the next video